Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TNG back with a brand new video and today is going to be the rerun of the race I did yesterday. Now, I told you guys I wanted to test out whether if I was to not stream while racing an AOR, whether it would affect my performance because as I said before, I felt like every time I streamed, I was losing so much pace compared to my own practice times that it was beginning to get a little bit confusing and I kind of suspected that it was probably be, probably be me streaming and the fact I'm getting like mini stutters and all sorts of stuff definitely losing like frames and all that good stuff so I decided to just do the race and then record the replay and give you guys a rerun now I ended up qualifying in 11th place so already a massive improvement to what I was getting before and um qualifying was pretty good and I, I didn't put as much practice into this race as I did for some of the other races but it happened to go pretty well man but um anyway let's get stuck into the race guys and I can tell you like it was difficult Silverstone in the wet a lot of fast people around me um, obviously the Aston was pretty stable in the wet probably didn't have the raw pace of like the the Lambos and um, even the McLarens were pretty fast but obviously of course you're going to get a lot of stability whenever you use the Aston Martin and kind of just use it to the best of my knowledge man and was able to really throw the car about someone spins right in front of us we were so lucky not to get collected I did about 20 minutes of the practice race on Sunday and the exact same thing happened in turn one and I got absolutely collected so this time we managed to avoid it managed to get through the first corner and yeah I was pretty happy man um it's it's pretty difficult to drive in the rain because you're constantly in spray especially when you're sort of in the mid pack we're about in we're in about 10th at the moment let me switch the camera i think we're in about 10th and um you can see most of the people around me we were all pretty much the same pace now in quali i could have probably went about two tenths faster which probably would have put me up in like six but i i invalidated my lap but I was so happy with the lap man because I really was not expecting to even be that close to be honest. I wasn't expecting to be in the top 10 because I didn't put as much practice in but uh, pacing pretty good and it was just trying to get used to the car on heavy fuel. The, the, the reason why I didn't practice that much is because if you don't know in wet races it's, they're very hard to practice for if you don't have a full lobby in practice so um, that's pretty much why I just showed up to the the practice race while there was like 30 plus cars so you actually get the correct tire pressures because when you practice with just maybe five cars on track the track conditions are completely different because there's not enough cars to clear the water off the circuit so you end up with wrong tire pressures the times are way slower and um for instance when i practice i think my fastest lap was a two minute 10.5 and then once we got into a lobby with all the cars on track it was down into the 206s so you can see the, the difference in speed when you actually have full track full of cars but um, behind us i think we got podence and he was definitely very quick i noticed the difference the differences between the cars now with, with the mclaren it's like way way later on brakes so you know it gets its nose into these fast corners so you're always under pressure through Maggots and Beckett's when you've got a McLaren behind you and definitely under pressure on the, on the brakes. The thing where the Aston was good is because it doesn't have a lot of torque when you put your foot down. So out of the corners, the acceleration was pretty good. But right here, Podence is all over us and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to let him go um, and just make sure I can keep up with the, the, the pack in front. I didn't want him to be like all over us throughout the whole race. Like pushing his nose in because I could see how desperate he was to get past and I could tell he was probably faster than his position where he was at um, so I decided to let him go try and stick with him the thing is like when you do top split racing a lot of the time you can be down in 20th just because you've messed up your qualification and had the pace of someone who's running in top 10 but everyone's so similarly paced it's, it's very very hard to, to make positions when everyone's got uh, similar pace so i decided to just focus on my race focus on my driving and see where it would put me um, there was definitely going to be some penalties you'll see later in the race and for now pretty much just happy where i'm at the acceleration i was actually dipping the tc tc2 down to five on the exit of that corner and we were absolutely 
skating away from any car that was behind us. That was pretty much the trick I used. Just coming out of that slow section, put TC2 down to five and put my foot down and literally we were just pulling away every time. So I ended up not being under pressure at the, um, the for, for the last couple of corners because I was able to always get away in that section. But I definitely knew sort of Manx and Beckett's and through the middle part of the lap, some of the, some of the um, rear engine cars that had, or mid engine cars that had a lot more rotation. They were able to really put me under pressure through the section. The Aston though is always fast down the straight, so that, that was a good thing. But again, pretty much just a, a big train at the moment and just trying to make sure we keep our pace up. As I said, there's going to be loads of people who are put a similar pace. It's just about not making any mistakes because the moment you make mistakes, you can end up losing one, two, three, four positions, even if it's just a small mistake. So that's where I was focused at, but I was comfortable, man. Like, I, it wasn't like the pace was hard to do. It was just literally just easy, you know? And I wasn't having any of these micro stutters. I wasn't sitting here thinking, why am I like eight tenths a lap slower than my own pace? I wasn't doing any of that. I was just able to do what I felt like was just a normal pace. So I think right by now we're still in 11th position where we started at. Obviously there was a crash turn one, but I think we only gained one position from that. And then obviously we lost the position to Podex, so we're back pretty much to where we started. So coming to the end of lap six, still got Podex in front of us. I think we've got Patat behind us as well in the Ferrari. So we're a little bit in no man's land. Podex getting away ever so slightly, but we've managed to create a small gap behind. But of course, the moment you make a mistake, everyone's going to be back um, right behind you. But I, I felt good, man. I was in front of a lot of esports drivers and I was kind of in like, this is kind of the position where I kind of see myself when, when I've got the pace, you know, I should be round about, you know, top 10. If you, if you go back in the day and look at a lot of the races that I used to do when first um, when we first started doing league race in the ACC, I was round about, always round about the top 10. And even back then, when I, when I think about it, I never actually used to stream. I used to do what I'm doing now. I used to record the replay and then, you know, do a voiceover and whatnot. So I never actually used to record in the beginning, which is probably why I used to have better performances, man. And the moment I started streaming, it's just, I'm not sure if the PC can handle me streaming ACC and racing at the same time. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure, but it definitely seems to be an issue. Because like I said, especially Kota, Kota was the one for me because I was so fast in practice. I was like at least top six or seven the whole entire time. And then we got to the race and I was literally nowhere near my own pace, which is kind of crazy, but um, it is what it is. Same thing happened again in, um, in round two as well. I was like, was it round two? No, same thing happened at Mizano where I was literally eight tenths a lap slower than what I could do in practice, which I was completely baffled. After that one, it was definitely a case of, no, I need to, I need to try and do something because this is just, it doesn't make any sense, you know? Um, but yeah, we're still pushing on in the race, still in 11th position. You can see pretty much just a big train of cars. Can't really, couldn't really do anything to, to get out of it. I never really had the, the pace to, you know, close them down completely, but they couldn't really pull away. As I said, everyone pretty much lapping within a tenth or two. And um, this, this is top split racing, man. It's more about your execution and your consistency than your actual speed, because everybody is, everyone's literally fast, you know? So um, obviously you've got the guys at the front who are ridiculously fast, but from, I'd say from 10th, probably to 25th, 26th, the pace is probably a couple of attempts at best and it just comes down to your consistency and just not making mistakes man and your execution how good you are at the pit stops and stuff like that that's basically the, the biggest difference between you know guys who are always in you know temp and guys who are finishing down in the 20s and for the most part my consistency so far this season has been bad because I've not been able to maximize my, my pace but this race was different, definitely different. A um, lot of different cars at the front. There were other Astins at the front that were very fast as well. But also, of course, you had Whitehead in the Lambo. You had Sierra 
in the pool. She was very fast as well. So it was, it was a good mix. It was a good mix again. <clears throat> but of course, I did pick the Aston Martin for races like this. I was very close to picking the Bentley, but I thought, you know, in a in conditions like this, where I think the Bentley would probably struggle, definitely be a handful. You know? So um, one of the main reasons why I never ended up picking the, the Bentley, but for me, the Aston just a good all rounder at the moment. Definitely one of the top cars in race conditions. I still do believe it lacks a little bit in terms of one lap performance, but in race conditions, the car is definitely a monster. But we're coming under pressure by a patat. But this corner, the, in the last corner, the acceleration was pretty good for the Aston man. I could get on the throttle very early and always manage to pull out a little bit of a gap. Because we, we definitely needed it. Because when, once we get to Maggots and Beckett, you'll see they, they start to take a lot of time out of us, man. It was pretty, it was pretty insane. I can get through turn one pretty fine, but we get to Maggots and Beckett's and it just seemed to gain so much. It was pretty crazy. I was, I was happy with my pace. Definitely happy with my pace. Normally you'd see like, I don't know, it's weird. Like, for the most part, every, ever since I've been in sim racing, my race pace has always been my strength. But for whatever reason, last couple of years I would say on ACC obviously I've been bottling quality all the time but my race pace has been terrible you know and it's been pretty weird because my race pace has always always been stronger no matter what my race pace is always stronger quality you have to really concentrate really nail the lap and you know you can you've only got a short space of time to nail a good lap but in a race where you don't really have to you know you're not under that pressure to get the perfect lap you know you can just drive at your pace but for whatever reason it's just been just been slow you know, in the races but you know definitely a big difference man so from now on i'm not sure whether i'll stream the races or just do what i'm doing now but we run a little bit wide there and patat will definitely be right behind us but again just remember the aston's pretty fast down the straight so it's going to be pretty difficult for other cars to get a run on us what was difficult though is when the tires did start wearing you could feel it mostly in the slow corners it was definitely the slow corners where i'd feel it the, the lack of rotation um the braking a little bit start missing brakes just a little but you know you could you could manage that by putting the brakes a little bit rear or braking slightly earlier just get a small tap on the rear and that's i think close as we came to having any sort of big accident he was really close and he managed to stay with us in the last sector which this is why i focused a lot on the last sector but after this that was like a wake up call man we kind of just put our foot down and just said no we, we, we can't let him get that close again because i, I don't want to end up getting binned and um pretty much just kept pushing on you can see podets the guys in the front they've opened up a small gap now i've got a few cars behind me so time to concentrate and put my foot down because don't want to be getting into any incidents and getting overtaken coming towards almost the midway point of the race we're about 40 minutes in and some guys some guys are deciding to pit already some guys are going for the big undercut um and let me just show you guys the positions at the moment so we're up to ninth i think Jar jardia has already gone for the undercut so he's gone pretty early but the undercut is going to be pretty big if you manage to get that free air, you're able to nail some laps with the fresh wet tyres. The undercut is going to give you a substantial amount of time. And two, guy, two guys in front of me both peeled off into the pit lane. So I was thinking about it, but it's like if I pitted with them, then I've got definitely not going to gain anything, you know. Um, so I kept on going and um, it was time to really put the hammer down. I think Patat as well, he pitted behind us also. So he's gone into the pits. And he's going to be looking to undercut us as well. Now, my pit stops have not been the greatest, I would say. Probably one of my biggest struggling areas is just pit stops. And I'm slow into the pit lane. I'm very cautious. And then I always mess up the box. So, obviously, you know, you're going to lose a good 
three or four seconds just by getting it wrong. And I can already tell you guys now, I, I, I picked in wasn't too bad, but I did miss my box slightly, so I had to get moved, which was annoying because obviously I'm racing the guys behind me and I'm racing the guys who have pitted earlier, but my in laps were pretty good. I think I managed to close the gap to, to Briat, who actually believe I believe he gets a drive through penalty. I'm sure he gets a drive through penalty. Um, if I can remember rightly. He was in front of me. Yeah there you go. He did get a drive through penalty so he ends up behind us as well. So we we gonna get up into fifth position for the pit stops. The guys in front of that are, are gone. I don't feel like we can catch them. Um they would definitely Quite a bit faster than the pace we had. We were doing like I think low two minute sevens. They were in mid two oh sixes. So they had insane pace. Now. But we were pretty much one of the best of the rest, I guess. And then just trying to make sure I had good pace before the pit stops. Trying to close that gap. I knew the guys who had already pitted would be fast, but it was whether they were in clear air, and I wasn't sure they were. So I kept on going. I wanted to do sort of two extra laps because just in case they had traffic or just in case their tyres took a while to get up to, I wanted to take full advantage of that. Um, and yeah, it was time to just get the hammer down. I had Herbanots behind me as well. And I was just kept keeping an eye on the gap to see how much he was closing and gaining. He did seem pretty quick as well. Even though our pace was only within a couple of tenths of each other, but he definitely seemed quick. So... I wanted to get the pit stop done and um, try not to lose any position. So into the pits we come and I know about this pit lane, sometimes if you go in there too hot you can slide and hit the wall, but you can see I was pretty cautious in there. I was pretty cautious in and I think Herbinox definitely, definitely closed the gap somewhat. But now you're going to see the error that I made and oh man, pit stops on this, on this game were just so annoying and we got moved and that right there that's about three three seconds so i already knew i'd lost the position to um the guy in the mercedes which is so jarring bro so jarring because it's, it's, is there any reason for the pit stops to be this technical i don't think there is <laughs> i don't think there is i stopped from the marks pretty well and you know again just get moved man and it takes so long to put you up after you've been moved. It's crazy. But back to the action. And as you can see, we're coming down the pit line thinking, oh no. As soon as I saw his car drop, I just knew it was it was a wrap. It was an absolute wrap. We definitely lost. I had about three seconds there. And with the pace that he was showing, I knew that our pace was pretty much identical. And yeah. That was it. And the guy in the Lambo, also, he got jumped as well. But what actually happened is, I believe him and Podence had contact. So he was, in fact, in front of... Um, he was actually in front of Podence coming out of the pits. I think it's Aviles or Aviles. He was in front of Podence. I think Podence made contact with him, spun him. So he ended up behind. So I would have ended up probably in a net sort of ninth place i think if i didn't mess up the pit stop which would have been very very good into the top 10 but wasn't to be i definitely need to practice the pit stops because i'm awful man i do it every single time every single time i always have bad pit stops man. so definitely something i need to practice and get better at but i thought i hit the marks man i did i thought i did all right but obviously not Again, we're going to be pushing on. Again, we're racing the same guys. And I can tell you now, our pace was literally just the same. So it was so hard to get close. I was struggling to do anything in terms of, you know, trying to put on overtaking maneuvers. Sometimes I was faster. Sometimes they were faster. Sometimes I'd make a mistake and then catch back up again. But still a lot of cars that I haven't pitted. So we dropped down to 17th place. But... A, a good portion of the, the guys in front have not pitted either so um, we're on the fresh tyres some people always wait for the half an hour mark exactly to to pit for me 
I think it's situational. I think if you're happy with your tire wear, you're happy where the car feels, then you can get away with pitting sort of 10 minutes early. The last five minutes of the race might be a little bit tricky, but sometimes it's all about that track position, man, especially when the pace is as close as it is in this race. Still managing to hold on to Avalis. We got really close, but the Lambo, again, was pretty good out of the corners, as we were. Once he gets his foot down, it's very hard to, to stick with him. And again, they're using a lot of low TC, man. And that's the thing with low TC. It's, it's, it's very, very hard to, to do anything against it. Very hard. Um, especially if they can handle it. And he managed to handle it, so it wasn't a problem. I was so surprised because he, he came out of it. He came out of turn one and he was able to run wide without losing pace all the time. I'm so surprised he didn't get like a drive through because he did it so many times. I can remember yesterday on the exit of turn one, he was wide so many times. But he, for some, whatever reason, the game just didn't seem to pick it up. But I, I counted at least five or six. But I don't even know how he wasn't losing grip on the, on the AstroTurf. Whenever I went on the AstroTurf, the car was getting sketchy. I had to got a feather the throttle just a little um centima i think he came out of the pit lane just behind us so even he almost jumped us and he was a good few positions behind so you can tell how bad our pit stop was he must have had some good pace on the older tires as well because obviously the gap is literally non-existent but now we're in the sandwich between a lambo and a mclaren and um i couldn't really escape so still under pressure from behind santima was pretty much on our case man and we, we had similar pace there was a few drive through pennies for cars behind as well so didn't have to worry too much about other cars it was pretty much just santama that we had to worry about um and whether we could catch alvarez in front who was matching our pace the whole time he did pit a little bit earlier than us so i was wondering whether towards the end of the race if i'll be able to catch him whether his tires would wear but i do find in the rain the tires don't really degrade that much compared to if you were to stop sort of 10 15 minutes early in the dry you would definitely you know you would definitely pay for it more at the end of your stint whereas in the rain for whatever reason i don't think the drop off is as big so um maybe you get a, the, the first few laps i think on the fresh tires are a little bit quicker but after that you sort of just drop into the same sort of pace you was doing before the pit stop so um yeah, it was, it was going to be tough, man. And I wanted to catch the Mercedes because in my mind, I was like, I should have still been ahead of the guy in the Mercedes because I just messed up the pit stop, man. And as I said, our pace wasn't too dissimilar the whole time. So I could have been fighting for that position. Obviously annoyed at myself, but I was relatively happy just because, you know, if you look at some of the guys we're ahead of in this race, we'd be nowhere near them you know, in the past. So, um, definitely definitely happy with where we are i think podence as well i think he had like a 35 second penalty so at the time i knew that was going to be another position that i would gain so my focus was is just not making any mistakes and sort of seeing if i could close the car down in front podence though he definitely had a lot of pace so it's a shame for him that he had the incident with avales avales also would have been a little bit further down the road because he did actually get spun so you can see how much time they did gain on that early pit stop. It was around about maybe five seconds. Obviously, I did have a bad pit stop as well, but they gained about five or maybe six seconds on us. Um, so pretty, pretty crazy, pretty crazy how, how, how a poor pit stop just just getting moved a couple of inches just takes away so much time. Man. It's, it's so annoying. But again, this is one of those things that you, you kind of you have to practice for because every circuit i think the pit stop the way where you stop your car can be a little bit different um and i pretty much didn't practice pitting more than once i think so there is that but i can see all the cars ahead of me going down the back straight trying to close the gap as i said it was so hard man it was literally so hard to close the gap one one lap i would be faster and then the next lap I would you know make a tiny mistake and then lose it all but that's just that's just the way it is man the fastest guys at the top they tend to go through these races making not more than one or two mistakes and 
that, that's the difference man that's the difference in the levels but pretty much all the guys you can see in front the pace was similar i still think there's a, a few people that haven't pitted yet or maybe one or two so we were waiting for them to pit I'm just trying to push on and see if i could keep santima behind me he was fast through some sections but definitely towards the end of the lap this is where i was kind of getting away it was this section here where i could i could pull away you can see how close he is he's right behind us but put the traction down to five and you can see on the acceleration we're able to just extend the gap a little bit so he couldn't get close to us out of that corner and also the last corner as well for whatever reason the Aston in first gear when you put your foot down the accelerator um i was just able to always pull away out of this last corner um short shifting up to second as well seemed to help so we got down to first gear here short shifted up into second on the exit and we were just always able to pull away um what 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 i did like about this race as well or what i'd liked about my own driving in this race i was being a lot braver when it came to the curbs because normally when it rains i don't go anywhere near the curbs and today i was just you know some of the curbs i was just riding them and you know you kind of got to get ready to count the steer before it even happens and you know, that's that's what you got to do to be quick in the rain man you've got to you've got to be ready to to count the steer because you are going to get a little bit of the car slipping but sometimes it's just quicker man you can see through maggots and beckett's though how much the mclaren catches man it just gets the nose into those corners so well and even though i felt like i was going quicker through the first sector a lot of the time i was up on my lap but it's so fast like on braking you can brake way later and entry into corners it's the, the car is super quick so that's why you're always under pressure at the you know at the, the start of the lap and the second half of the lap where the traction zones are more important that's where i was getting a little bit more peace um, as i said like i said avales he was off the track all the time i don't know how this guy didn't get a penalty honestly i don't know I see him go off at turn one on the exit. He must have not been getting um, complete warnings. He must have just been getting those warnings that let you off the hook because he was off so many times. I was like, I was like is this guy not getting the drive through? Like how? How was he achieving this man? Because it was crazy. I'm telling you man, I, I saw other people getting drive throughs I'm not sure what they were for. If they were for track limits then I generally don't understand because sure Avales he must have, he must have been close to it to a penalty he had to have been because he's on the exit of turn one and on the exit of um the last corner on the on the f1 layout he was always wide always wide over track limits and just nothing and me i was you know i was modulating the throttle so i didn't go wide and the one time i did go wide i actually got one warning you know so I was confused. Let's see again if he goes wide here. Um, I think that might have been okay. I don't think he would have got on there. But definitely some of the other corners, man, he was seriously wide a lot of the time. It's baffling. <laughs> it's definitely baffling. But some cars are different. Like I found in the Bentley, I'm sure of it. Maybe because it's on the right hand side. But I'm sure you can go further off the track in the Bentley without getting a room. I'm so sure. It's, it's definitely weird it's definitely a weird one but still under pressure you can see Santama right behind us and it was one of those things where he was fast enough to put me under pressure but i'm not sure he was fast enough to get past me if i didn't make a mistake so it was pretty much all about you know my driving and trying to be consistent i was trying not to drive in my mirrors because i feel like that's when you start making mistakes when you're constantly looking back i was just looking forward man because I knew, again, he's wide there again, man. crazy. I, I knew if I didn't make a mistake, it's gonna be very hard for him to get a run on me. But some corners were getting a little bit tricky under braking. That was the only thing, this corner right here, this is the only corner on the circuit that was catching me out. Sometimes cars wouldn't slow down and then you kind of have to straight line it because if you turn, then the back end tries to step around and you can end up spinning it. So. Whenever I did go deep, I just straight lined it and just go into the corner deep and then obviously because the next corner is left handy, you can kind of just hold the inside so not lose too much um, in terms of positioning 
and as I said the acceleration on the Aston was pretty good compared to the McLaren I was always able to accelerate to safety pretty much sometimes we would close in on Avales and other times he would just be too fast it was just a up and down stint though. up and down stint but I'm, I'm in I'm in a position that I'm, I'm happy with I knew that Podex had a penalty to come as well so we're gonna gain another position going through turn one I was taking the curb knowing that the car might slide a little but it was kind of helping to pull the car around a little bit in the wet obviously you do get um you do get quite a bit of understeer so you want to try and make the car rotate as much as possible without being unstable which is which is pretty much the um the trick to creating a good wet setup you want to have a lot of turning but you want to have a very very stable car and that sometimes can be quite tricky to do obviously in the Aston it's a lot easier to do because the Aston is very stable anyway some of the other cars though you know you can see the car in front of me he's back in snapping everywhere and obviously you probably have to pay a little bit more attention when you're driving a Lambo in the rain because it's probably a little bit more tricky than it is to, to drive an Aston which is one of the main reasons why I picked it um, but seemed to be okay again off the track i don't think maybe he's not wide enough maybe he has to be completely off of the black and white rumble strips but it just seemed to me he was just always wide but um it is what it is and a lot of, yes you have to have a lot of confidence to be out there on the astro turf that far off and keep your foot pinned because i was like bro i got on that astro turf that he was on a couple of times and i could feel the car slipping and sliding all over the place I thought, nope, I'm not going to go out there. I'm going to try and keep it to the track as much as possible. Um, even through that, even through that corner over that curb, kind of, kind of pulls your left hand tires towards the left. So you kind of have to counter steer before it even happens. And it was, um, it could be, it could be a corner that catches you out. I saw a few people, I think a couple of people spun there. I think Gert Fisher had a couple of spins, just coming off of a curb. And, yeah, man, this. It is definitely tricky. So we're heading for the last couple of laps. You can see we're still under pressure. Um, still holding off Centima and telling her. <laughs> like, probably one of the one of the best things I've done in terms of consistency because I just didn't really give him any real chances apart from a couple of times I went a little bit deep into the braking zones. Um, because he pitted later as well, his tyres were just that little bit fresher and as I said you can't there's no real big difference but um I could tell my braking was starting to get a little bit more tricky I was going to put my brake bias more to the rear but I kind of didn't want to risk it at the same time just in case I have that one snap of oversteer on the entry into a corner and then obviously I'd end up giving him a, a you know an opportunity but see how close he is going down the straight the Aston pretty quick I knew Going into this corner, I'm breaking pretty late. He wouldn't be able to get me through here. And actually, midway through this corner, the Aston actually has very good acceleration for some, for whatever reason. But he's pretty close right now. And I knew that he, he, he could break a lot later than I could into the tight corners. So I was just going to make sure, just try not give him an opportunity, try not let him get too close in the corners where I knew he had a, a much better braking performance. But... It was getting to that stage where I'm thinking he might try something. We're getting there to the end. He might try something. So as you can see, we just run wide there and we're going to go so deep into the next corner because you just can't get the car turned. It goes late on the brakes, but we hold it inside. And I knew the thing is when it's raining, there's just not a lot of grip offline. So you can't really do nothing. So I square the car off, put the TC2 down to five and we absolutely just blow away from the pressure it happened every single time and for me that was a saving grace man i was gonna keep leaving tc2 on eight through the tight corners but i felt like it, it bogged you down so whenever i took the wrong sort of line into that corner when i went down to tc2 and when i put tc2 to five it always allowed me to accelerate away and again through that last corner you can see the acceleration they were able to get much much earlier than the mclaren and I think that's because a lot of the guys in the McLarens, the Lambos, because they run such low TC, either they have to get on the throttle much more gradually or 
they have to short shift to stop the wheel spin whereas the Aston you can literally put your foot down in first and just just get away you know so that that's that's what was helping me you can see we've had a, a pretty good first sector but he gained so much for the last part of Magnuson Beckett just look at how much he gained look at the nose of the car the way he's able to pull it into the fast corners and literally straight on the back of us he probably took about six temps out of us in, in Magus and Beckett's alone which is insane and um, again I, I already knew this was the corner that I, I didn't want him to be too close to me coming out of here because he was definitely much later on the break so he's kind of close I definitely would have if he was a little bit closer I would have turned in but he went slightly for a little dive and it was one of those ones where listen <laughs> you're gonna have to hit me because I'm turning in you know would have been a it would have been a pretty big lunge but um in the end he he kind of he kind of backed out of it because he knew it would have been like a, a half chance and kind of gave me a lot more space and um it was definitely fast the braking zones man that I'm telling you lads the braking power on that mclaren is insane like literally you whatever gap you build they just take it straight out of you when it comes to the brakes man straight out of you um i ran i ran like my brake ducts on two and it was absolutely perfect for these conditions perfect i've been i think i've been a little too conservative in some of the races i'm running my brake ducts way more open than i needed to you know and i'm not sure how much pace it costs you but i'm pretty sure when you're going into corners and your brakes are cold all the time it, you, you're probably going to get irregular brake performance and that's definitely not definitely not what you need but i'm telling you this race man it was it was it was it was a tough one but finally finally we finished the race and we ended up in 10th once podents took his penalty so we ended up finishing in 10th position which i i was i was super happy with man super happy with the guys in front obviously look listen luke whitehead always drives an amazing race and um, Seattle was was insane today Seattle in that race he was very very fast and probably just the undercut caught him out um but he was definitely very fast very impressive Walsingham Jardier I can't say this guy's name <laughs> I can't say his name either Warner and then Podence obviously had 35 second penalty Herbenots um would move up to eighth Al alvarez would move up to ninth and then i'm in tenth and yeah pretty decent pretty decent man pretty decent result um probably my best race for a long long time and probably probably the race that i didn't stream so it's unfortunate man but we'll see what we do in the future maybe we do more recorded content and post a video the next day um anyway guys hope you did enjoy the video cryptic tng like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace if you're a sim racer that struggles with car setups and you want to improve your basic tuning knowledge then head on over to your regional amazon store now where you can purchase my book performance unleashed gt edition also available on kindle get your copy now and i'll see you on track